Blue Hawaii is a stand fight in Part 8 of JoJo. It itself is a mirror of a Part 4 fight called Highway Star. Now, Highway Star felt like an intense action sequence in which the characters need to continuously keep moving because stopping meant assured defeat, only to later be caught right before he's about to have the final meeting with the villain, where Jojolian's Blue Hawaii arc is a slow mess with a boring running panel-to-panel -panel pace, and the power changes from moment to moment during the fight, and it has one of the biggest anti-climax Maxes and Jajolian so far. So let's talk about why Blue Hawaii is so poorly written. Now, I don't have to compare the two arcs to know that they're similar, and this isn't a video about that. I know that, that one is a mirror of the other, and if you want more on that, you can go to Xports video on that subject. This video will be more about how Blue Hawaii is a boring arc in Jajolian. So, on that note, onto the arc itself, which begins about page 26 of The Man That Lives in the Pond, part 1. Here we see Jobin making contact with Dolomiti and asking him to help him out with a plan he's formulating. And from here, we move on to the beginning of the stand battle in itself when Josuke receives a tooth from a kid who then later at the very end of this arc or of this part turns around and starts walking towards Josuke. Whoa holy shit is that Emporio? Oh my god is he gonna come tell Josuke the secrets of that he's living in a universe created by Made in Heaven even though it makes no sense because Steel Ball Run and Jajillion have nothing to do with Made in Heaven and, and I oh no, no wait, he's he's just a kid who gets hit by a car and dies. Oh, I guess I shouldn't formulate theories purely based on the appearance and design of a person. That'd be dumb, right? Though in all seriousness, this is around the time the real shenanigans begins for this part. We start to learn that Blue Hawaii is a mind control stand, that anything that comes in contact with a piece of Dolomiti himself starts moving towards a desired target in a straight line. This is a decent setup for what could be an interesting fight, and again, does seem very similar to Highway Star, where Highway Star doesn't have this type of straight line limitation or needing a host body and in fact, Highway Star is just a purely better stand. We also learned that in this arc that the blood transferal method for Dolomiti is how people get mind controlled. It, they become infected if the blood touches the target and becomes the next host body. Though, we'll get more into that in a little bit. Though from the little boy to the old woman, Josuke slowly begins to figure out the stand ability, and while this is going on, Jobin and Dolomiti are having a conversation about Blue Lagoons and what they're going to do with their life after they get the Rokakaka. You can figure that more out by actually reading the arc, but I'd recommend just skipping a lot of this and just getting to that part because it's like the only interesting part about this arc. Though after Josuke encounters a plot hole and takes care of the old woman via shovel, he abandons her to a building still under construction where she continues to walk against a wall until a group of people come over and get infected by her. This leads to the idea that anyone can be affected. Though, then we get another scene where Josuke gets a call back to Josuke from part 4 where he calls Yasuo, the equivalent of Koichi in this universe, and this scene doesn't really hold the same amount of intensity as the Highway Star arc where Josuke had to steal cell phones while driving on a motorcycle where this Josuke stops and calls her on a phone while walking on foot. But now that Yasuo begins to help Josuke identify who the user is, we get a final panel of Josuke surrounded in a, in a crowd of people which made me very excited to see which way this arc was going to go. Is it going to go into a more social horror aspect or is it going to go right back to everything it was doing already? And boy was I let down as all the excitement left my body when we reached part 2 of Blue Hawaii. Only only six pages in and we're back to the original formula of Josuke running, something gory and intense happens, then the mind control transfers over to another person, and we go back to running. This cycle happens about three times in the span of a few pages, and then the only interesting thing that happens in that entire fucking part of Jajolian this month, this month chapter, is that Paisley Park uses her power to find Dolomiti, or like, who Dolomiti really is. And then as soon as that happened, holy shit, Speed King attacks! Holy shit, this is gonna be a meaningful death in Jajolian? Did some- she had her fucking head fucking heated up! That's gonna give her like a brain aneurysm! Is this really interesting? Oh, no, wait, literally the first page of part three of Blue Hawaii, Yasuo is completely fine and all dramatic tension is dropped and this entire arc is completely dull and boring and holy fuck, you gotta stop getting hyped. And not only- not only that, but right after she gets up, Josuke then returns to the same fucking formula where a thing gets close to him, dies, it for transfers to the next person. This happens, I believe it happened three times. It was bird, person, then fly. And though, to be inter the interesting part is the flies were kind of foreshadowed at the very last shot of part two of Blue Hawaii. But that, that's, 
I, that's something I'll give him. But besides that, Josuke uses bug spray on the zombie fly, which stuns it for some reason, even though the people prior to this were walking through total death scenarios and not stopping. But, you know, whatever. Gotta keep the story going. Josuke then formulates a plan to catch a fly between the doors in the bathroom, but then he, suddenly a baby starts crawling through, and that means Josuke comes to a moral contundrum, which makes absolutely no sense for Josuke in Part 8. So, throughout the entirety of this arc, and of Jojolian, Josuke has witnessed countless deaths at the hands of stands. Hell, the first victim of this stand attack was a little boy, which Josuke had no problem with attacking with his stand and dumping hot coffee on his face. Josuke, also throughout Jojolian, has been very much violent, more violent and less sympathetic than any of the heroes. He fucking tortures the fun 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 stand user, he smashes and tries to drown the I am a rock, he lies to the police, he easily disposes of the twins in like a very brutal fashion, like poisons one to death and watches the other one catch on fire, he executes Demo in the middle of the fucking street. Josuke has a small, insignificant moral compass. It doesn't apply to anyone he doesn't care about, like directly, like Yasuo and maybe part of the Higashikata family. So to see Josuke struggle to defeat a baby, that comes completely out of left field and feels rushed and not part of his character. It feels like a decision Araki had to make to advance the plot, and not something that would logically happen. But whatever, the baby touches Josuke, and he falls under Dolomiti's control, which... Wait, Dolomiti can fully control people with Blue Hawaii, and it's not been... Okay, now let's talk about Blue Hawaii. Blue Hawaii and Dolomiti is probably one of the most obvious cases of Rocky making shit up as he goes. Looking at all the interactions between Dolomiti during the arc, we see Jobin jump back at the sight of him, making sure not to touch him, and then he gives subtle clues that touching Dolomiti is very dangerous. And then we learn that it's specifically touching the blood. If the blood makes contact with the person, they become under mind control. That means that... Clothing should be the first line of defense, but I can get past clothing not being the first line of defense, but then Jobin puts on rubber gloves and he specifically uses them to touch the tooth. He doesn't touch the tooth originally, he slides it into the envelope without touching it. But then we see him touch them later on, which maybe it's the plastic covers it. Plastic's fine, but then if you look at the fight between Josuke and the old woman, when the old woman grasps Josuke's fucking shoes, she bleeds all over them. That means he should have instantly fallen victim to the mind control because it's no different than when the baby grabs him in the end of this arc. Not to mention that Blue Hawaii apparently can control every bit of a person's brain, making them talk out without even fucking... It... Oh, this fucking stand bothers me so much that... It just made shit up as it went. It didn't feel like a consistent stand, and that's not something we've had from Jojolian yet. We haven't had, like, a really bad stand like this, and that's what Blue Hawaii ended up being. And it took them three fucking parts, technically five parts, if you count the first two men in the pond arcs, to get to this point. And that's... it bothers me so much, because not only is it five parts, that's five months, not including the break in between, so that's seven months for this useless fucking arc. So, with, uh, that rant out of the way, Blue Hawaii is not only longer than the part it's imitating, Highway Star being around 60 to 80 pages, depending on where you want it to start, because you can include the Rohan part, which means it's 80 pages, if you exclude the Rohan part, it's about 60 pages. This fucking arc in Jajolian is a whopping 180 fucking pages. Actually, more than that, that's just a rough estimate of the number of pages I had to count. So, that's about 40 pages throughout those 180 that actually fucking contain interesting ideas or plot progression. And a lot of this arc was just repetitive running away, useless fucking gore scenes, also feels way long-winded, feels way more like filler, and that shouldn't be what Jajolian feels like. It also fails at the rules of three. It constantly keeps repeating the same shit. In Highway Star, Josuke had three huge moments, like three very big moments that included his stand Crazy Diamond. That was the baby carriage, the empty tank, the empty tank of gas, and finally the beatdown on Yuya. These scenes involved using Crazy Diamond in very unique and interesting ways that gave the arc a nice sense of excitement and movement and everything fucking flowed well. Blue Hawaii was full of the same shit constantly, and that was what made it so fucking annoying to read. I hope to god that I'm done with this Dolomiti shit, because the next chapter's coming out soon, and Yasuo has finally put him in his place, he ratted out like a little bitch, he was nothing like he was built up to be, and this is the end of the whole Blue Hawaii arc, fucking hopefully. If Blue Hawaii 4 is the next fucking arc of Jajolian, I'm gonna blow my fucking brains out. And this arc itself is fine, it if it was like two parts long, but it was a fucking grind to sit through, took about seven months to complete, hopefully. 
and felt like filler the whole time. And that's my biggest issue with this arc as a whole. And that's why I think it's really poorly handled, really poorly written. It doesn't even compare to some of the parts in its own fucking part. It's it's an awful, it's awful. But you know what isn't awful and doesn't feel like filler? New game. Yeah, I fucking caught you off surprise there, didn't I? Fucking really cute anime. I recommend checking it out wherever you can, be it Crunchyroll. Maybe you can find the Blu-rays on Amazon. And with a season two coming out, when's a better time to start? So uh, please go check out New Game. It's the best.